Hi class, welcome back to our next chapter, which is, which is chapter 5 on gas turbine power plant. So in this video, I'm going to show you on how to calculate the simple Brayton cycle. Alright class, uh, so this is an example taken from your textbook on the simple ideal Brayton cycle. So a gas turbine power plant operating on an ideal Brayton cycle has a pressure ratio of 8 and the gas temperature is 300 Kelvin at the compressor inlet and 1300 Kelvin at the turbine inlet and utilizing the as standard assumption you need to determine first the gas temperature at the exit of the compressor and the turbine next you need to find the backward ratio and finally the thermal cycle efficiency So you already know that this is an example of the ideal Brayton cycle. So first of all, you need to plot this TS diagram over here that indicates an ideal Brayton cycle. So you have this compressor work and your turbine work and this is the combustion part and this will be your heat rejection part. Alright, and given to you the inlet temperature to your compressor is 300 Kelvin. The inlet temperature at your turbine is 1300 Kelvin. And you also are given pressure ratio which is P maximum over P minimum. In this case, it is P2 over P1 or P3 over P4 and it is equal to 8. And because this is an air standard assumption, so you will have CP value is equal to 1.005 kJ per kg dot Kelvin. And your gamma value or K value will be 1.4. Okay, so here is how you are going to solve it. But first of all, you need to find A your temperature at the outlet of your compressor which is T2 and outlet of your turbine which is T4 next you are going to look for backward ratio which is work of your compressor divided by work of your turbine in this case your compressor is in between 1 and 2 and your turbine is in between 3 and 4 and because you have this both CP terms so you can cancel it out and number three, you will need to find the thermal cycle efficiency, which is 1 minus Q out over Q in. And your Q out is in the state of 4 to 1. And your Q in is the combustion part, which is state 2 to 3. And because CP is a constant value, so you can serve up the both term. Alright, so now we continue on how to solve this problem. So you have state 1 to state 2 which is, a, which is an isentropic compression because basically when you project to this line your S1 must be equal to S2 and it is assumed to be an ideal Brayton cycle. So from the isentropic relation you have T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 gamma minus 1 over gamma and you rearrange this mathematical form into this one and substitute your P2 over P1 which is equivalent to RP and you plug in all the value and finally you are going to have T2 is equal to 543.43 Kelvin so by now, you have already solved your part A, which is to find the outlet temperature of your compressor. Alright, so now we continue on solving for your outlet temperature of your turbine. Where you have state 3 to state 4 is actually an isentropic expansion. Where this is an ideal cycle, your S3 is equal to S4. So you make use of this isentropic relation which is your T3 over T4 is equal to P3 over P4 gamma 
minus 1 over gamma. And if you were to rearrange this mathematical form and leave your t4 above, it's going to be t4 equal to t3 and inverse of your rp gamma minus 1 over gamma which is your rp value here is equivalent to 8 therefore when you plot in all the values given which is t3 is 1300 and finally you will get your answers for t4 is equal to 717.66 kelvin so automatically you have answers your part a which is to find your t2 and your t4 all right now that you have all the value of your temperature needs which is your t2 and also your t4 we are going to solve for your part b and c where in order to find your backward ratio it is equal to temperature 2 minus temperature 1 over t3 minus your t4 so you plug in all the values that you have and finally you are going to get 0 0.41 or 41% this means that 41% of your turbine output is used to drive your compressor next is how to find your thermal efficiency where you make use of this relation that we expand earlier and you plug in all the values t4 t1 t3 and your t2 and finally you are going to get the answers <laughs> which is 44.79% thermal cycle efficiency alright so you are not going to use that CP here because you already cancel out the term and for both here you are not going to need um, the unit value because it is a ratio basically and this one you are looking for your efficiency so you can leave it out in ratio or you can leave it out in percentage so that's all for now we will meet again in the next video.